Acts 13. Now in the Antioch community there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius the Cyrenian, Manaean, brought up since childhood with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Ruach HaKadosh said, Set apart from you Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting, praying, and laying hands on them, they sent them off. So sent out by the Ruach HaKadosh, they went on to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salam Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. They also had John as a helper. When they had gone throughout the whole island as far as Paphos, they found a man who was a magician, a Jewish false prophet, whose name was Bar Yeshua. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Eliamus, the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, who was also Paul, filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, fixed his gaze on him and said, O you, fool, all, o you, full of all deceit and trickery, son of the devil, enemy of all righteousness, will you not stop making crooked the straight plans that paths of the Lord? Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind and not see the sun for a while. Immediately cloudiness and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. When he saw what had happened, the proconsul believed because he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Setting sail from Paphos, Paphos, Paul's company came to Perga in Pamphylia. John left them and returned to Jerusalem, but they passed on from Perga and came to Antioch of Pisidia. Entering the synagogue on Shabbat, they sat down. After the reading of the Torah and the prophets, the synagogue leaders sent to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, speak. So Paul, standing up and motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel and God-fearers, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with an outstretched arm, he led them out of there. For about forty years, he put up with them in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land as an inheritance. All of this took about 450 years. After that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. And they asked for a king, and God gave, them, God gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. After removing him, he raised up David to be their king. He also testified about him and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do my will. From this man's seed, and keeping favor with his promise, God brought to Israel a savior, Yeshua. Before his coming... John had proclaimed an immersion of repentance to all the people of Israel. As John was completing this service, he said, What do you suppose me to be? I am not, but behold, one is coming after me, whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who are god it is us. it is to us the message of the salvation that has been sent. For those who live in Jerusalem and the rulers, not recognizing him or the sayings of the prophets that are read every Shabbat, fulfilled these words by condemning him. Though they found no charge worthy of a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all what had been written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him up from the dead. For many days he appeared to those who had come up from Gal the Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people, and we proclaim to you good news. The promise to the fathers has arrived, for God has fulfilled this promise to the children to us by raising up Yeshua, as it is also written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have become your father. But since he raised him up from the dead, never to return to decay, he has spoken in this way, I will give you the holy and sure mercies of David. Therefore he also said in another psalm, you will not permit your Holy One to see decay. For after David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he went to sleep and was laid with his fathers and saw decay. But the one whom God raised up did not see decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers, that through this one is proclaimed to you the removal of sins, including all those from which you could not be set right by the Torah of Moses. Through this one, everyone who keeps trusting is made righteous. Be careful then, so that what is said in the prophets may not come upon you. Look, you scoffers, be amazed and vanish away, for I am doing a work in your days, a work you will never believe, even if someone tells you to it in detail. As Paul and Barnabas were going out to the, the people kept begging them to speak these things to them at the next Shabbat. 
When the synagogue meeting broke up, many of the Jewish people and God-fearing inquirers followed Paul and Barnabas, Paul and Barnabas, who were speaking with them and trying to persuade them to continue in the grace of God. The following Shabbat, almost the entire city came together to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jewish, le Jewish leaders saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and tried to contradict what Paul was saying by reviling him. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke up boldly and said it was necessary for the word of God to be spoken to you first. Since you reject it and judge yourselves unfit for eternal life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have placed you as a light to the nation so that you may bring salvation to the end of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were thrilled and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many had been inscribed for eternal life believed. Now the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole region, but the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stared up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and they drove them out of their district. But Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off their feet against them, and they went into Iconium. And the prince's disciples were filled with joy in the Ruach HaKadosh.